Welcome back to CBS News coverage of the Democratic National Convention. Let's listen now to former White House Homeland Security Advisor from the Trump administration, Olivia Troy, who resigned four years ago in protest. As a national security expert, y como Latina, y hija de una inmigrante mexicana, que realizó el sueño americano. Being inside Trump's White House was terrifying. But what keeps me up at night is what will happen if he gets back there. The guardrails are gone. The few adults in the room the first time resigned or were fired. I grew up in the kind of working family that Trump pretends to care about. Conservative, Catholic, Texan. <laughs> July 4th was our most sacred holiday. Those values made me a Republican. And they're the same values that make me proud to support Kamala Harris. Not because we agree on every issue, but because we agree on the most important issue, protecting our freedom. So to my fellow Republicans, you aren't voting for a Democrat. You're voting for democracy. You aren't betraying our party. You're standing up for our country. Thank you. Please welcome former Georgia Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan. Good evening. I bring greetings from the great state of Georgia. So let's get the hard part out of the way. I am a Republican. But tonight, I stand here as an American. An, am an American that cares more about the future of this country than the future of Donald Trump. My journey started to this podium years ago when I realized Donald Trump was willing to lie, cheat, and steal to try to overturn the 2020 election. I realized Trump was a direct threat to democracy, and his actions disqualified him from ever, ever, ever stepping foot into the Oval Office again. I could spend my time revving up this crowd, but I'm certain I don't have to talk anybody out of voting for Donald Trump here. So I'm going to focus my attention on the millions of Republicans and independents that are at home that are sick and tired of making excuses for Donald Trump. If Republicans are being intellectually honest with ourselves, our party is not civil or conservative. It's chaotic and crazy, and the only thing left to do is dump Trump. These days, our party acts more like a cult, a cult worshiping a felonous thug. Look, you don't have to agree with every policy position of Kamala Harris. I don't. But you do have to recognize her prosecutor mindset that understands right from wrong, good from evil. She's a steady hand and will bring leadership to the White House that Donald Trump could never do. Let me be clear to my Republican friends at home watching. If you vote for Kamala Harris in 2024, you're not a Democrat. You're a patriot. In our 
family, in our family, my wife Brooke and I are raising three boys, and we have a family motto. And it says, doing the right thing will never be the wrong thing. During 2020, during the, just the lowest of lows, when we had armed officers outside our house protecting us from other Republicans, Donald Trump had targeted us. My son came downstairs, and he handed me this coaster that I'd given him years before at a father-son retreat for our church. And he said, hey, Dad, doing the right thing will never be the wrong thing. Stay strong. <laughs> to my fellow Republicans at home that want to pivot back towards policy, empathy, and tone, you know the right thing to do. Now let's have the courage to do it in November. Thank you, and God bless you. Some powerful remarks there from the former Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan, a Republican who said, if you vote for Kamala Harris, you're not a Democrat, you're a patriot, Gail. Very, very strong and also very touching what his son just said. The emblem that his son had given him to say, "It's it, you, when you do the right, it, Dad, doing the right thing will never be the wrong thing, stay strong. You know, he made it clear that his family was put through hell by the Trump administration. You know, it's interesting to hear Olivia Troy also say what she just said to her fellow Republicans, you're not voting for a democracy. You're not voting for a, a Democrat, you're voting for democracy. It's interesting to see the number of Republicans that are here in, a, in the, at the Democratic Convention. Bob, how many, how, many, uh, how many Democrats did you see at the Republican Convention? Not many. Yeah. <laughs> what you but see. My point, exactly. And Democrats believe, if you look at the suburbs of Atlanta, Georgia, there's a real opportunity there. Traditional Republicans like Jeff Duncan, who don't feel comfortable in Donald Trump's Republican Party, they could go and maybe vote for Kamala Harris, the vice president of the United States. They don't this have is, to do it publicly, though, the way they're doing it. They don't. But right. this is, Democrats believe there's a soft support for Trump among the GOP. Think about the Republican primary. How many times when we were tracking it for CBS News, even after she got out of the race, did we see 15 or 20 percent of the vote for Nikki Haley? Yes. Because when people go in the, the privacy of a polling booth and they look around and nobody's watching, They'll, pull, they'll maybe pull it the, for a Democrat or, or yes. someone like Nikki Haley if she's mm -hmm. on the ballot. She's not on the ballot, though. And so Democrats know a lot of these Republicans are going to stay home, but they need some of them, at least, to show up. Mm -hmm. And just one more point on Olivia Choi. At a political convention, you know, you kind of feel like, well, this is all politics. What she represents is the number of people who worked with Donald Trump. If you were doing a job interview and you interviewed references, You've got a dozen or so former high-level Trump officials who say he should not be allowed back in the presidency. Imagine you were doing a job interview and you did, and you got 12 negative references for the CEO you were hiring for a company. You would no longer try to hire that CEO. She is representative of high-level people who have made a judgment about his ability. And just to build on that, they're yeah, not... Remember, Mike Pence wasn't even at his convention. That's just right. Think, just think about that for a second. You're to, all vice president. To build on that idea of references, they're not saying he did a bad job. They're saying he's dangerous. Yeah, right. yeah. That he can't get anywhere near the White House, the Oval Office again. And that's what puts this at a level that we've never seen before in any political convention, in any presidency. I mean, I'm sure there were people who were not going to support Andrew Johnson, but I'm just saying we've never had former officials of such high level. Yeah. But it's notable, though, inside the Trump campaign, they don't take a lot of this seriously. They do not believe, and they might be wrong, that January 6th breaks through, that people are going to vote on that issue. They think this election is going to come down to how people feel economic pain and issues like border security and maybe a few other issues like abortion rights. But it's not going to be about Trump's conduct. They believe Trump's personality and history are so baked into the electorate that the Democrats can play it up as an issue, but it really will only be on the fringes of the GOP vote. Again, they might be wrong, but that's how they see it. But Donald Trump keeps saying on January 6th he's planning to pardon some of the people who are convicted. It'll be interesting that when the security officer takes the stage to see what he has to say about that. We are going to hear shortly from the Capitol Police Sergeant Gannell, who, of course, has spoken out publicly and in some of these hearings as the Democratic Party has a different view, which is that January 6th does resonate with viewers. Does it resonate with suburban women? 
Does it resonate with those independent voters? We know that those are always rock solid Republicans. You're right. They're not interested in hearing about January 6th. The Democrats already baked in. What about that small sliver of independence? It'll be interesting to see. And it's coupled with the issue of race. I mean, a lot of Republicans out there, like Jeff Duncan, they see former president's track record on issues like race. They see his track record on issues like January 6th, and they say, I'm just not comfortable with how he talks about these issues.